Welcome back, everyone, for another edition of Rudy's Rants. From Come on now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I am here to rant about something new. You know, I, you know I always have things to talk about because there's always content available. It's just a matter of having the time to talk about everything. And then, obviously, it's a rant, so I have to have an emotion in it. And if there's not something I'm emotional about or have any feeling about, I just don't do it. But I'm trying something new here. So bear with me a little bit as I practice with this, you know, with, with my program. But I'm jumping in here on Colin Coward. Colin Coward is an interesting figure on Fox Sports, very well known in the industry. But Colin Coward says a lot of crazy, crazy stuff that I tell you what, I, I, I just don't know what, what he's thinking when he says certain things. So when Ronnie James was drafted, he had he gave his opinions about how he he referred, you know, he talked about nepotism and how friends of his asked would ask him to give their kids jobs, for which he said no. He said that he could get them internships, which are not jobs, they're free experience gaining opportunities. But with the Bronny James situation, he tries to compare it and he tried to compare it to, you know, lawyers hiring their kids, but they're not hiring their kids as lawyers. If their kids have not gone to law school and passed the bar, he hires them if they haven't to work in their mail room or be a secretary or be a runner. That's typically how parents who own businesses do things. But this is what Colin Coward had to say about the Bronny James situation when the draft happened. Take a listen. This has carried the league for 20 years. He and Steph Curry have carried the league. Neither made a playoff run this year. The tank, as everything else is, the Copa and the Euros are going through the roof. NBA with a lot of good players. Global sport tanked. No LeBron, no Steph. Yeah, I'm okay in the weakest draft ever. The Lakers going, we'll do you solid. In the five previous years before LeBron got to the Lakers, I could be wrong on this. I think they had the worst record in the league. They were a circus. They were leaking everywhere. He won them a title. Got him to another Western Conference Finals. In the weakest draft ever, his son, who, by the way, I think his son's a G-leaguer. I think it, at best, he's a low-end rotational player. But this draft was horrible. After the 36th or 37th pick, you can argue it's a G League draft. I'm not losing sleep over it. And nor should you. So you heard what he had to say. First off, I call bullshit on all of that. Outside of it being a bad draft, it was a bad draft. There's no question about it. It was a bad draft. But Bronny James still had no business being drafted in that bad draft. And Bronny James is not a an end of the bench or 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 fringe rotational player in the NBA. And he's not he damn sure isn't that. And he's not even a G League player. Not right now. And that's what I said when he was drafted. He was never he was not a G League player when he was drafted. Bronny James should have gone back to school. Okay. He was a 4.8 per point per game score off the bench off of one of the worst Division I programs in the country at USC. The starter ahead of him averaged over 16 points per game and was 23 years old and was not drafted in this draft, even though he's far superior a player to Bronny James right now has the experience, is older, and is far more prepared to come and play for a team in the NBA to try to help them win as a rotational reserve. Bronny James is not that. So he was okay with the Lakers doing LeBron a solid. And then he also referred to the, 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 the ratings tanking and all that stuff because LeBron wasn't there and Steph wasn't there. Newsflash, Colin, the wor- one of the worst rated NBA finals took place in the bubble 
where everyone should have been actually watching TV because no one had anything to do because half the majority of the country was shut down. So even with a majority of the country shut down, the ratings for that NBA Finals, which was a 2020 NBA Finals ratings, I'm looking them up right now, but I know that they were bad because I'm a Heat fan and the Heat were playing the Lakers. They were pretty god darn bad. And who was on that team? LeBron James. For the 2020 NBA Finals, the ratings dropped to a historic low, with one of the games drawing only 5.9 million viewers. The average viewers figure over six games was 7.5 million, which was a 51% decline from the previous year. This was... LeBron James playing. You just made a point that LeBron, the ratings were low just now this past year when I was 11, 12 million people. But the worst rated NBA finals of the last quarter century were, was featuring LeBron James and Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers during a time where the entire country was shut down and all people could do was watch the NBA Finals because they couldn't go out at night. Unless you were in Miami. <laughs> and then you could. Which just happens, happens to be where I am from, is South Florida. But you were wrong then. You're wrong now. And now, this is what Colin Coward has to say about Bronny James. We have seen this week LeBron James in clutch sports. They engineered Bronny getting drafted with the number 55 pick. Now, it was a terrible draft, and anybody drafted there was going to be a G leaguer at best. But Bronny offensively doesn't even look like a G leaguer. It's been embarrassing. He's 0 for 14 on threes. He was bad again last night. Now, I do think athletically he can be a defender in this league. Maybe, but he would not have been drafted if not for LeBron James and Clutch Sports. In a good draft, can't draft him. This team, the Lakers, can't really waste draft picks. But they do need on-ball defenders. They're old in spots, expensive in others. He's cheap and can defend. That I don't deny. No, he can't. But in both the case of Nike and the case of LeBron James. They had power. Power can corrupt. Men, men tend to flex. Anytime they have power, they use it, misuse it, or abuse it. This classifies as misusing it. You were okay with that a month ago. Dad, the classic parent, trying to muscle his kid to get a job that he didn't really earn and kind of getting in the way the natural flow of life usurping somebody, getting power, jamming a kid in. You know how many times I've been asked, hey, can you get my son, my daughter a job at blankety blank blank? And my, and my answer is always, I can get him an internship maybe. Let's stop there for a second. I get an internship maybe. I said that earlier. I can get an internship maybe. Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. Le Bronny James is not getting an internship. Ronnie James was drafted into the NBA draft by the Los Angeles Lakers, who are claiming that they are trying to win a championship. He is not remotely close to being a pro athlete, even a G leaguer. G leaguers are pro athletes. They're just not NBA players. People play in Europe, people play in Puerto Rico, people play in Turkey, people play in China, Taiwan, Philippines, etc. Mexico, you name it, South America. There are leagues all over the world. He was not, he was drafted to play professional basketball. He wasn't given an internship. He's being paid $8 million for this favor. This is not an internship. This is not a, I'm going to earn my job. They've already paid him, given him a four year guaranteed deal for $7.9 million. When people who are picked 55th get a two way contract. So a month ago, you had no problem with it. Now you're seeing how absolutely terrible he is, and now it's abuse of power. No, it was abuse of power then. 
LeBron abused his power. And the Lakers bent the fuck over. Make up your mind, Colin, because a month ago you had zero issue with this. And now a month later when you're watching him in Summer League, for which LeBron has no problem saying, oh, it doesn't matter how many points you score in Summer League. It doesn't matter this. I guarantee you if Bronny James had scored 30 in the first Summer League game, LeBron James would have been blowing the world on fire. And all the Bronny and LeBron apologists would have said, I told you he was that damn good. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been covering high school basketball for half my life. I've coached high school basketball players. Bronny James is a good, very good high school basketball player. He was a below average freshman on one of the worst Division I programs in the country. How does that translate to being a draft pick, even in a bad NBA draft with the 55th pick, let alone being paid nearly as much as a, the back end of the first round? It does not. And a month ago, this guy had no problem <clears throat> sitting here telling you, nepotism's okay, it's okay, I don't care, no problem, all that stuff, and you're attributing this shit to a bad draft to draft someone so wholly unqualified that he looks completely lost on the floor. But let's continue what he had to say before I continue. I can't get him a job. They're not qualified. It hurts. It's painful. It's the truth. So both Nike, Clutch Sports, and LeBron had leverage. And in my opinion, this is the downside to it. Brawny's been sort of embarrassing so far. Now, the Lakers are in a position where the new coach, J.J. Redick, now has to go to the microphone and tap dance to make sure he says all the right things about Bronny. He's a development player. That's how we're looking at Bronny. He's certainly going to spend time with the Lakers. He will spend time as well uh, in the G League. We're going to develop his shot. We'll develop his ball skills. He's already got a great feel. He has a really good uh, instinctive nature on the defensive end. Has J.J. Redick been paying attention? I, I, I get it. J.J. Redick has to pander and, and create this bullshit narrative to support the draft pick and support the he earned it nonsense he said in that press conference. Bronny James has played, I think, five games now in the summer leagues between the two different summer league situations, and he's been absolutely atrocious. It's been terrible. He's been terrible. And I don't want to hear about points. It's not about points. Because the things that you claim that he's supposed to do well, he doesn't do well. Not at this level. He's not doing well. He's so instinctive. Awful Coaching put out a video breaking down his performances. And I'm going to link it again because I linked it in a previous video as well. Shout out to Awful Coaching. They break it down, showing exactly what he's doing when he's doing it. Showing the mistakes he's making on defense because he's overextending. He's doing It's improper technique. He's trying to be a hero, trying to make the steal, getting praised for blocking a fucking alley-oop pass as if that's some amazing feat. Makes a steal, but does the same thing, and then five other times when he misses the steal, it's a layup. When he's on offense, he was 0 for 15 through his first four or five summer league games from three-point range. Today he hit two out of five. Today, he had 12 points, actually. I'm looking at it right now. He had 12 points today. He was 5 for 11, but guess what he didn't do? All those things that you say he can do, he had one rebound, he had one steal, he had no assists, he had no blocks. And when he was on the floor, they were minus 10. I'm not a big plus minus guy. I, like, I mean, I think it works for certain situations and others. It's just... It's a summer league, so I don't really know. I don't really care or about the, the plus minus all that much. But I'm mentioning it because it exists. 
because there's a guy off their bench who was a plus 12 and he had six points. But the fact of the matter is, and obviously they also had 17, who was a minus nine. So the fact of the matter is he had his best scoring game and did nothing else in this particular game. But for the for the vast majority of this summer league stuff, that he's the summer league games between California and now Vegas, he's been awful. He's been awful. He's making mistakes left and right defensively. He's overplaying. He's un, he's not helping properly. And then and then offensively, he thinks he's a shooter. He's not. I don't want to hear JJ tell me, oh, he has a nice, he has a good shot. No, he doesn't. He shot 27% from three. J.J. Reddick, did you ever shoot 27% from three at Duke? I doubt it. I doubt it. Easily verifiable. So why not? I, why don't I just do that right now? J.J. Reddick, college stats. He's a developmental player. G League? It seems I don't think he's going to be in the G League. They're, he's going to be on the roster. He's going to be on the roster. Otherwise, what was the purpose of drafting him? J.J. Reddick shot 40.6% for his career from three at Duke. He never shot lower than 39.5% from three at Duke. As a freshman, he shot 40% from three at Duke. As a freshman, J.J. Reddick averaged 15 points, two and a half boards, two assists, 1.2 steals. He shot 44% from the field and 40% from three. As a freshman. Freshman. Don't tell me that Bronny James, and that was at Duke. Do not tell. Let's let, let's take a look at who his teammates were. Let's look for a second. Let's let's look at this the teammates of this team that year. As a freshman who JJ Reddick played with. Let's see here. He played with Sheldon Williams, who was a freshman, Chris Duhon, who was a junior, Dante Jones, a senior, Daniel Ewing, a sophomore, Shavlik Randolph, who was a freshman. Casey Sanders, who was a senior. I, I mean, he was the second leading scorer on this team as a freshman. Don't sit here and tell me that your job is a – you're not here to develop this kid. You just did it to freaking suck LeBron off and do him a solid and embarrass yourself at the same damn time because he got you the job that you got because you didn't deserve because you didn't deserve that job either. But Colin Coward, give me a freaking break, homie. Like this is crazy nonsense you're talking. Yes, though you're right. He's been embarrassing. But you had no problem with it. You told us you had no problem with it and now you're calling it an abuse of power. It was abuse of power then. It was uh, it was extortion in my opinion. I said it before. I still think it's extortion what they did. They're not going to get better because of him. He should not be on the roster. He should not be in the G League. He's getting murdered by guys in the G League. These are guys that are, will be in the G League, and he's getting absolutely destroyed by them. He's undersized. He can't shoot. He's not quick enough to guard point guards. He's not a point guard. He cannot run an offense. He cannot dribble. Watch them on offense. He runs to the corner. He can't make a three, and yet when they drive, he doesn't cut towards the basket to create a backdoor pass for a layup. Or a dunk. Instead, he stands in the corner, waiting around, hoping the ball comes, or maybe not hoping the ball comes because he's his confidence is such is so shot because of the fact that the pressure of the world is on his back, and it is. Thank your father for that. He's the one that told the world when you were still in high school that you were better than half these cats on League Pass. And last year, when you were not even when you were playing at USC, that you could low key start and, you know, he could be a starter for the Lakers or play for the Lakers right now, insulting his own teammates at the time. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The Lakers don't develop talent. All they've done is trade talent since freaking LeBron James got there. They traded Lonzo Ball. They traded Brandon Ingram. Who They traded every player they had, every young player they've had. The only one they haven't traded was Austin Reeves because they couldn't. Because he wasn't good enough to trade at the time, and then he became a good scorer. But remember, Austin Reeves was also a good college player. Averaged 17 points a game in college, something like that, in his last two years. Austin Reeves was a good player in college. Far better than Bronny James. 
This is a joke. And when I watch this from a month ago to now, and you listen to this crap from guys like Colin Coward who are pandering this garbage a month ago, sorry, you can't be upset about you can't be cool with it a month ago and a month later say it's abuse of power. No, it's it, it was abuse of power then, and it's still an abuse of power now. And the only reason that looks really bad is an abuse of power is because he fucking stinks. He's been terrible. But I suggest you go watch, go watch Awful Coaching. Go, I'm going to post that link, I promise you. I'm going to post that link in there. You go watch that and you let me know, is that a professional basketball player? Because if you think he is, then you don't know basketball. So the things that he's supposed to do well, he's not done well in summer league. These are things that are nothing to do with scoring outside of making an open three-point shot. That is the only thing it is. Make an open three-point shot for which he can't do it. In the, in the NBA. He can't do in the summer league. He couldn't do it at USC. I don't wish ill will on this young man. It has nothing to do with him. It has to do with the fact that comparing sports to some lawyer giving his son a job as a freaking mailboy or a file clerk or you giving getting someone an internship is not remotely the same to someone freaking getting a, a dra drafted into a league to make life-changing money. Not for him, but for any normal person, any kid that's drafted number 55 who gets five hundred dollars or $600,000, which is what Isaiah Wong from the University of Miami got last year for one year on a two-way deal for which he played the entire season in the G League and averaged 15, 16 points a game as the ACC Player of the Year, having helped lead the Miami Hurricanes to the Final Four And Bronny a year later makes a four-year guarantee eight seven point nine million. Get the fuck out of here. This is not an internship. He's been given a gift that other guys like his teammate Boogie Ellis, who didn't get drafted and averaged over 16 a game, starting in front of him, did not get that same opportunity. And I don't know that Boogie Ellis would have been the draft pick. But there are players that are just like that. And before you tell me, look at the guys in the first round, X, Y, Z. Oh, he averaged five points a game. Look, the draft itself was trash. I don't agree with half, half of what these guys do for drafting players now. They draft out of Europe constantly, which disgusts me. We've never seen these guys play. But don't dare compare Bronny James to the number two pick in the draft who's seven foot tall. He's six, one and a half. Victor Wembanyama, Wembanyama last year had a bad first game, and then after that he blew up the summer league. And he was also seven foot four. Do not compare Bronny James. I saw one to Trey Young. Trey Young was an elite college player and was a top five pick. What are we comparing? Are we comparing apples to apples or apples to to, to pears? Or apples to, to grapefruit. There's no player who's six one and a half in this draft who averages less than five points a game on a bad team who's sitting here being drafted in that draft. None. Nobody. But Colin Coward can go on with his bullshit and switch sides and flip-flop. It's expected. They do this. This is what they do. But that's a bunch of horseshit. Pick a side. Pick a side. Pick one. Because it was embarrassing then, and it's embarrassing now. It didn't change because he's not good. It changed because he's embarrassing. But that's all I got. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And be sure to hit that bell. Come on now.